Here's one of the biggest problems of beginning content creators and those with budget years. All content creators just want one thing from their microphones, clear audio which can feature their awesome speaking or singing voice. But in today's day and age, this has been far from the reality. So many people with the BM800 are having problems with his, and many creators have turned to find solutions on the internet, and some have even been tempted to buy the forbidden item, the V8 sound card. The more you try to fix it, the more it tries to fight back, and the more desperate you become. You look at the videos of Norkla and Boss Lucia to find a solution to no avail. You give in to temptation and buy the V8 sound card, but it only makes you feel like this. You break down in a corner in a fetal position, crying in despair. All hope is lost. But is it? What's up, guys? I'm gonna finally help you reduce your hiss. I know, guys, I see your comments every single day, your cries for help, and I'm here now to save you guys. Because if no one will make a video on hiss, then who will? If you guys are new here, my name is Norkla and I'm an action star. We're gonna learn about reducing hiss today. Let's get started. So in a more serious note, hissing is actually a big problem for content creators because it actually detracts or reduces the production value of any content that you produce. So imagine going to a stream and seeing all the visuals or maybe even a YouTube video, editing is on point, the storytelling, etc. Et is perfect. However, when you hear the narrator, hear a spoken word there, it's full of hiss and garbled, etc, etc. It's going to turn you off. And that's what hiss does to your viewers. It can potentially scare your people away. And for example, if you're a streamer like myself, it is very important that your microphone and your audio has very little noise so that it doesn't tire your viewers' ears out and make them bleed during the stream. Now, before we get to the actual tips that we will be going through today, I want to walk you through, guys, with some very simple concepts that you need to understand before we move into it. As usual, I really want to make sure you understand the technical and the theory side of it so that you can try troubleshoot your own setups because all of our setups are different and as much as I want to help each and every single one of you guys who drop by my videos it's just not physically possible so I hope that you don't skip this part and that you stay and learn before you jump into the solutions however if you already know what I'm about to say and you're going back to this video I've also left some very helpful timestamps below so that you can jump to the relevant section that you need so the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about, the most important thing that we need to discuss today is the noise floor. Now, to put it simply, the noise floor is basically the natural sound that each piece of equipment produces. And that's the reality, guys. Every single piece of equipment, whether it's microphone or an audio interface, has some sort of hiss. In more high-quality products, the hiss is negligible and in lower quality it's usually the hiss is much pronounced and meaning the noise floor is actually higher now let's understand how each part of the signal chain affects the noise floor let's start with the microphone the microphone's noise floor is actually dependent on two factors the first one is that it's design now, when I was doing my research for this video, I chanced upon a, an article in the Shure website and they really did a good job talking about the trade-offs between sound pressure levels and the noise floor. If you have a lower noise floor, it means that your microphone cannot tolerate higher sound pressure levels and vice versa. And you might ask me, hey Norkla, shouldn't all mics be quiet, you know? What's the point of having a high sound pressure level mic if it has, you know, a high noise floor and it, it hisses? If you think about it, there will be some applications that you need to be able to tolerate high sound pressure levels. For example, if you're micing up a bass drum, I'm I'm sure you've seen it if you've seen a bass drum before like the kick drum you will see that the actual drum actually vibrates and if there's a hole there you'll see that there is a rush of air whenever that kick drum is hit so you're gonna need to have a microphone that can take high sound pressure levels or else it will distort but if you're using it for applications that need it to be more quiet for example if you're scoring a movie recording a classical music session or even streaming you're gonna have to have a mic that is quieter. So you really have to take a look at the mics, what they're designed for, et cetera, et cetera. If you keep track of my stream and you hang out there, you'll know that my mic is the Rode Procaster. And it's actually a kind of a mid-range, upper mid-range microphone 
and it actually is pretty quiet. I'm super happy with it. However, the BM800 is a cheap mic and it does have its own noise. And I'll get to the second point. The second point after design is actually components. Now, in that Shure article uh, that I'll link down below, by the way, which you should review, they explain it really clearly. There is an inverse relationship between cost and noise floor. So the lower your noise floor is, the higher the cost is. It's very expensive to build mics that are quiet. and. The M800s are actually generic products. While they are good, it means that they generate quite a lot of hiss. Say, for example, my Rode Procaster or maybe a more expensive condenser or dynamic mic. Now for the audio interface. The audio interfaces are actually responsible for uh, making sure that it can provide clean gain to your microphones. Now, clean gain is a concept where it's the ability of an equipment to boost audio signal without adding additional noise or distortion. And the piece of equipment within the audio interface that is responsible for clean gain is what you call the preamps. So whenever you look at audio interfaces, it's always good to check what preamps they have. Usually, manufacturers will advertise or mention the preamps that they do because it is a selling proposition. And one of the best ways to take a look at it or discover what preamps the product that you're looking at is through looking at its manual and its documentation. In my case, I've only had experience with two preamps. The first one is the Scenix preamps with the Behringer Q502 USB. It's this one. This one is a $60 to $70 audio interface. In the Philippines where I'm from, it's 3,500 pesos. And to be honest, I was surprised because I thought that this would be a very cheap device, it would be noisy, but in fairness, it's actually pretty reasonable. It can drive my BM800, so it drove my BM800 for a couple of months. When I upgraded to the Procaster, it was still was able to upgrade it, and the hiss was actually still audible, but it wasn't bad. It was, it was pretty good. And I was actually quite surprised. Right now, the audio interface that I have has Midas preamps. However, you know, this audio interface, to be honest, I like the tone of this one paired with the Procaster better than my GoXLR. So going back, so the Xenix preamps, while they're known to be entry level, uh, they're actually pretty good. So even if it's a budget price relative to the Scarlets of the world, you know, fo the Focusrite Scarlets of the world, the GoXLRs, and the other audio interfaces, it's actually pretty decent. And the other preamps that I have had experience with is the Midas preamps, which are inside the Go XLR. Now, Midas preamps are super high quality. They're well known in the industry for being very quiet and able to drive very hard to drive microphones like the Shure SM7B. And I've been working with this audio interface for around you know two two months already, and it is very quiet. If you go to my recent streams, actually my stream starting September, you will hear that my microphone is very quiet. You know, uh, the only thing that you can hear is my clear voice speaking through the microphone. So I'm really happy with the Scenix preamps and the Midas preamps. But at the end of the day, depending on the price point and your budget, you should be able to research what the specifications are and what the preamps are for those items. In fact, that's also one of the reasons why I'm so against people buying the V8 sound card. So real talk, I know I joke a lot about the V8 sound card, but the reason, primary reason why I don't recommend it is the fact that we don't know what preamps it uses. In fact, when I did my own test of it, when I really tested it in my hands, my BM800 sounded way worse than me just plugging the BM800 straight into the PC. And what's worse, the components inside are unshielded. I tried using it while charging, and then it added a lot of hiss and basically made the audio signal unlistenable. So make sure that you have the right preamps. Good news, by the way, for you as well, I am planning to review cheaper and more budget-friendly alternatives at the probably at the $20, $30, $40 range, and that's cheaper than the Q502 USB that I do recommend. Now, finally, the last piece are the cables, and the cables are usually a point of failure but are often overlooked. In terms of quality, cables don't really give you that jump from, you know, from normal to excellent. It's really the microphone and the preamp that's driving that. However, it could have a negative effect on your setup. So a couple of things that you need to check. First of all, if you're experiencing hiss, you may want to plug, unplug the cable, see if it's seated properly on both sides of the cable. And if there's still hiss, try to switch it up to another device and see if it works. If it still has some hiss and you're sure that your mic is not broken, 
then it's most probably time to change your cable. I won't stay in too long with the cables because it's really just more of a defensive play. Just check if the cables are working, check if they're properly positioned, and you'll be good to go. And now that you understand the concept of the noise floor and how each part of the signal chain contributes to it, let's get started on the actual tips. All right, so my first tip for everyone is quite practical, and it's all about positioning. One of the things that I always see content creators do with their budget microphones or their BM800 is that they usually have it a distance away from their mouth. Maybe it's here, here, up there, etc., etc. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that's not the way to go. If you have this microphone away from your mouth like this, you're gonna have to increase the gain. The problem is when you have budget mics and you have mics like the BM800, what will happen is that the hiss generated by this mic will also be amplified when you increase the volume. And you don't want that. Not only that, if you have to increase the gain, this is a condenser mic, it might also pick up ambient noises and early reflections so, and it will make your voice sound very echoey and you're not gonna get the clarity that you want. It will actually seem like you're in an open room and you're using just a headset microphone. My ideal way of using the microphone is you try as much as possible to keep it as close to your mouth as you can. In fact, try to get it to like just a fist away from your mouth so that you can actually speak to the mic without having to increase the gain so much and you may even have a proximity effect. No, note that when you're speaking uh, this close to the mic, you may want to have a windscreen just like this one or a pop filter. I've also seen people use both a pop filter and a windscreen. Just as much as possible, just try to choose one. You might be killing your higher frequencies, but if you know that's really your strategy, you want it to be more, you, your voice to sound more warm, then sure, by all means, use both of them at the same time. My next tip is set your gain or microphone volume properly. Now, I've switched over to the BM800, and as you can hear, I have a pretty low volume. I actually did that on purpose because I wanted to show you guys how to set it properly. Now, the levels that you want to have is actually you want to make sure that it is at this level, just at the green, where the green meets the yellow. You want it to be hitting that and just barely hitting the yellow side. You don't want it to hit the red or you will be clipping or you'll be peaking. And I'll show you guys how to set the levels properly. You search for sound settings and then you click sound control panel. And then once you have the sound control panel, go to the recording section and then find your microphone. In my case, it's this one. Go to properties and then he be here at levels. Now what you want to do is to try to set it as low as you can and then increase it and increase it and increase it and keep talking and keep talking and keep talking and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and talk, and talk uh, until you have the desired level. Now one of the things that you'll also want to do, and, and this is what I've found out before, is that if I put my microphone level above 80, it will actually sound distorted. I don't know what the reason is, but uh, it has to be here at 70. Now what happens is, for me to be able to compensate, is that in, you need to be able to uh, put like a plus 10 microphone boost here, so that it doesn't sound distorting, etc, etc. Now, unfortunately guys, I've seen your comments as well that sometimes you don't have microphone boost. I'm not sure why you don't have microphone boost, but I have a feeling that it's because of the Realtek audio driver. You may have different audio drivers, which is why you don't have this microphone boost. Actually, it might not even just be a driver issue. It may even be a hardware issue where your motherboard cannot provide like additional boost to your microphone. In my case, I've already tested this before the 70 and plus 10 db microphone boost is perfect for me so you gotta set it properly and one of the ways to actually test it also as well is if you're not using any uh, low latency monitoring uh, hardware what you want to do is record and then speak into the microphone and then after that listen to the microphone listen if there's any hiss or any adjustments that you may, may want to make so always test it as long as you're not comfortable with it yet usually when the levels are set properly when people already have the microphone close to their face and they're not unnecessarily increasing the gain on their microphone hissing disappears however there might be situations where you're still experiencing hiss so let's talk about the software options you have to be able to deal with this all right so i'm going to teach you how to use noise suppression in three types of ways the first one is in obs for when you're streaming second is for discord for when you're having voice chat and a secret weapon called nvidia rtx voice when all else fails so let's start with obs now for obs if you want to remove the hiss 
this, you'll want to use the noise suppression filter within OBS. So right click this mic level, I mean this, this graph where the mic slash aux moving, uh, click right click, click filters, and then go to noise suppression. And as you can see, there are two options here that you can uh, use. Now, let's try to activate one. The Speaks actually was the classic one before the major update. I don't recall the version, but before there was only one noise suppression algorithm and it was apparently Speaks. Let's use it for now. Okay, so I am using Speaks for now and I'm not sure if you can hear the difference, but I've actually spent a bit of time listening to the audio output based on this algorithm. And apparently, this one gives it a bit more, there's like um effect where it kind of distorts your voice towards the end of your sentence. So if you listen to it really closely, you'll hear that there's a bit of transforming and weird distortion there. But it's barely recognizable unless you are pretty silent. But if you're playing a game and there's music and there's action there, people are not gonna notice it. So this is Speaks. Now, the other one, RNN Noise, actually sounds quite a bit better. I haven't done a lot of tests in terms of how much hiss it can handle. However, I really appreciate the fact that this doesn't distort your voice like speak. So I would recommend that if you have a beefy enough computer and if you stream and it's not causing problems for you, use this. Otherwise, use speaks. Now that's it for OBS. Let's move on to Discord. By the way, guys, don't forget to join your Discord. Here, you can chat with me about stream stuff. Just send a message here at stream support. I'll answer it. As you can see, I'm pretty active here. Also, just hang out with my community. They're one of the most loving and supportive and inclusive communities there who also love memes and who also like editing my face into things. So it's somewhere it's somewhere there. So we like memes. If you like memes, if you want to improve your, your stream, join my discord server link is down below now what you want to do if you want to um, use noise suppression here is go to voice and video and then scroll down and then activate noise suppression okay activate noise suppression and that's pretty much it it will handle the noise suppression from your microphone to your discord output here is my concern and just warning if you're using for example voice mod or other voice or noise suppression software you should usually just have one at a time, okay? So if you're using a noise suppression, for example, from voice mod, and then you're adding noise suppression here on Discord, if they stack, usually it makes, uh, it, it clips your voice and it makes your voice sound funny. I've tried that on stream once. It's not actually a very, very good effect. So just keep that in mind. Now, hopefully, once you've, you've covered OBS, once you've covered Discord, hopefully the, the hiss has been fixed. However, there might be a case where it really is terrible. So let's show you how to get RTX voice. Now, earlier in the video, I said that we would be using RTX voice, but I realized that NVIDIA has already released something newer, which is called NVIDIA Broadcast. So we're gonna be using that as our final solution. Now you can see that it's here. There's actually some documentation about its release, but what we actually want is the download link. So just click that. I've already downloaded it, so I'm just gonna activate the installer. And as you can see, here is the permissions, and we're just gonna be waiting for it to start installing. Now, I used RTX Voice before, and it's pretty amazing. When I didn't have a proper audio interface and a proper audio treated room, it was actually able to remove a lot of the ambient noise and the hiss from my BM800. The only problem that I had with it was that it actually used at least one gigabyte of RAM whenever I used it. Now, I do have 16 gigabytes of RAM and I also use multiple Chrome windows when I was streaming, I'm using OBS. And I actually feel like, I feel like it is necessary for me to save resources, which is why I stopped using it. So, oh, Obviously, it says that NVIDIA installer cannot continue. Okay, I guess we need to download the display driver. Sorry, guys. Let me just quickly download this and let's get back into installation. So I've finally been able to download and install NVIDIA Broadcast. I've updated the drivers. We now are here seeing the NVIDIA Broadcast software. So as you can see here, there are three things that you can do. There's a camera. You can remove the background. There are some speakers. I actually am not sure what they do. I haven't really played around with broadcast, but what I am familiar with is the NVIDIA broadcast. And what you want to do if you want to experience the uh, removal of hiss or noise removal from your microphone 
what you want to do is to select your BM800 microphone, which in my case, it's this one, Microphone Realtek High Definition Audio. And pretty much you can test it here. Hello, hello, mic test, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can test it and hear it out. And now you can actually use NVIDIA Broadcast as your input device. Now, if you want to use it, for example, in OBS, this is what you want to do. So I have OBS open right now. Right click the mic slash aux auxiliary uh, indicator, right click properties, and then select NVIDIA Broadcast. That's what you want to do. And now we are using NVIDIA Broadcast. We are using the BM800 now, powered by the NVIDIA Broadcast, and it's already doing its thing. It's probably not that noticeable because my BM800 in the first place is pretty quiet. Now I'm gonna set it back to my original uh, original mix. And I wa also wanna show you guys how to select it on Discord and voice meter. So let's say I wanna, I wanna change it on Discord, right? Let's say I wanna change it on Discord. What you wanna do is that, okay, we need to disable streamer mode. So you, you go here, you go to voice and video again and then select Find NVIDIA Broadcast. Now, select it, NVIDIA Broadcast. Now, you are using NVIDIA Broadcast as your input device. I'm just gonna return this again. Ta da All right. And for example, I wanna use it also in, uh, what other software should we use it in? Oh, let's say we wanna use it on voice meter. If you wanna use it on voice meter, activate voice meter, and what you want to do is for your hardware input, you will want to use NVIDIA Broadcast. And as you can see, I am now using NVIDIA Broadcast. So before we do the uh, post-processing through voice meter, the EQ, etc., it's now going through NVIDIA's um, software and it's actually already removing uh, a lot of the noise that you will need removed. Now, what I want to show you guys, and let's see how much resources that it actually takes. Now you can see, I have here my task manager. Let's see how much memory the NVIDIA broadcast takes. And wow, this is a much more efficient software compared to RTX Voice. Just 570 megabytes, uh, way less than the one gigabytes that it used to use. So that's pretty impressive. I'm actually quite impressed with what NVIDIA has done. All right, guys, after watching this video, I hope you guys are now able to at least improve the hiss from your microphone. Note that all of this processing, the software processing, is still inferior to actually buying uh, proper gear or actually upgrading your gear. But if you're a starting out streamer or starting out content creator, I think these are really good tools for you to just start creating without worrying about spending things moving forward. And if you still are not happy with the results, maybe join the Discord community, send a message in stream support, and let's chat there. Also, don't forget, guys, if you want to see how my setup looks like and, you know, want to hang out and, you know, just chill and maybe ask me questions about streaming, which is the best place to find me because I stream there every day. And if you find this video useful, and you have other comments please put your comments down below and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified whenever i release new videos so hey guys once again this is norkla an internet action star and all the rice lahat tayo angat.